Off top, snails have teeth. Thousands of them. Play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. All right, welcome to the Dominique Foxworth Show. That man who doesn't look befuddled. I expected him to be uncomfortable with the weirdness, the weird way that I start the show, but he's not. That's Theo Ash. He's one of my favorite people to follow on the socials to learn about football, I guess. Mm-hmm. I feel dumb saying that I'm learning about football from this baby here who just <laughs> he just clowned me in front of my friends. So before the show started, I was like, hey, Theo, you're young. Tell me something cool. And then Theo went on to introduce me to Theo. Uh, 2093 Yeats' latest album. So I was like, I just did like an uncomfortable laugh. <laughs> I was like, you're just f- making fun of me. He just made up something that doesn't even exist. Then I Googled it. Apparently... It's how does it how's it described dystopian a dystopian sci-fi album. All right, I'm Rap down. Album. I'm downloading the out of that. It sounds I, glorious. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. Anyway, that's not why we have him on here. Not to make us cool and young. We have him on here to talk draft. Charlie, yeah. take it away. We got to talk about some cool young quarterbacks. So, so a lot of this draft, we have to start. Cool young quarterbacks. I guess that's true. Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. are very very. Young. <laughs> there we go. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, we have to start with the QBs at the top of this draft class because that's what everyone wants to know, how they're tiered, how they're grouped, where they're going to go in the draft. And Theo, I want to know how you group them because you've got Caleb, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., and J.J. McCarthy. All of them conceivably could go in the first in the first round, but they all fall in different buckets with Caleb mm-hmm. certainly at the top and then people beneath them. How do you sort of uh, delineate those groups? It's kind of a harsh grading scale, but for me, there's two guys that I'm interested in in the first round, and then I don't think the rest profile as high-end franchise quarterbacks. That's my current stance. And the two guys that I think have the tools to be all pro or, you know, take a team deep in the playoffs, whatever you want to designate an elite quarterback as to being, I, I think Caleb is there, and I think May is there, and then I think there is a very, very big drop off. And... After that, I don't really care. Like, there's some good, there's some good shots that you can take. Maybe you fall in love with one. Obviously, part of being a a football team is you're not always going to get the blue chip quarterback. You got to develop somebody. So these guys could be developed, but in terms of like surefire things that I think can really put a team in a backpack and carry them, I think Caleb and May profile is that. But everybody else, I'm I'm kind of dubious. All right. Well, Charlie asked you that question already know an answer because this is really what had me excited having you on is let's get into this Jaden Daniels conversation because we've heard wild he's, like I, I can't remember probably go number two in the draft yeah well I mean I it seems that way because we're in Washington they went and got Marcus Mariota and it seems that there's a lot of smoke around them wanting Jaden Daniels but the evaluation of him I've never seen such a wide breadth of opinions on a quarterback that's this high in the draft before. So some people say he's the best in the draft. Well, I guess it's really just Dan Orlovsky's the only person who's saying that yeah. he's the best in the draft. Chris Sims called him a 1B also, said in any other year okay. he'd be the first pick in the draft. Yeah. Right. But he still says Caleb's better, but yeah. he's like right up there. And then there's some people who say he's like, I think Nate Tice says he's 19 and uh, out of all the players – and you have the harshest evaluation of Jaden Daniels. So I'm not going to pretend like I have evaluated all these quarterbacks. I've watched a bunch of their games, and I've watched all 22s, and I have opinions, but none as strong as that one. So why is Jaden Daniels so far uh, separated from those top two for you? And are you putting other players – is he the third quarterback for you? He might still – yeah, I think that he is still the third quarterback just because there's no one that I'm really in love with, and he does have good tools. But I think there's a lot that is not elite about his game. I'll say that. There's there's not a lot of glaring flaws, which is nice, and I think his floor is pretty high, and I think being athletic and being able to run makes your floor pretty high because at worst, your rushing gain will probably get a huge boost. And there are so many times where he is just – there on like a read option and the end man on the line of scrimmage just stays accounting for him and then the running back sneaks between that defensive end and the line of scrimmage and Jaden Daniels opens up his own hole basically Mm -hmm. so I like that about him I think his floor is somewhat high but when I watch him throw the football I just am not sure what traits as a passer 
make him elite. And I think mm -hmm. you still need a lot of that. Right. So his deep ball accuracy and, I mean, I guess he won the Heisman, so we're not going to pretend like he's bad. And I don't want to put yes. you in a bad situation where you're suggesting that he's going to be a bust. It seems pretty clear that you think that his floor is pretty high. He'll be good, but he doesn't mm -hmm. for you seem like, like you mentioned, a backpack guy. And what is the issue with the deep ball accuracy? Because that's the thing that I saw when I when I watched him that I was impressed with. Am I just being kind of fooled by a couple of highlights, or and neighbors is it, and Brian Thomas, or is yeah, or is it the fact that yeah. he has elite receivers? The deep ball accuracy has always been very good with him, and that's going back to ASU. It actually was my class, ASU, oh. um, getting there in 2019. So forks up, right? That's he, what they say. Yeah, forks up. But he had he had Ayuk, he had Ronald Darby, who were amazing deep threats at that time, and now he's got Malik Neighbors and and Brian Thomas, and I think that his deep ball accuracy is quite nice. But I always say on Twitter, deep ball deep ball accuracy is a bit of a wide receiver stat. If mm -hmm. if you've got a guy mm -hmm. who can track it and make contested catches and do all these crazy things down the field, you can have a lot of wiggle room in terms of where you place that thing because there's a lot of time for these wide receivers to to run under it. And there's a lot of, you know, positioning to that has to be fought for. And a lot of it has to do with the wide receiver. And I think, I mean, you couldn't really ask for a better deep ball receiver duo than Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas were probably the two biggest athletic freaks in this draft. But it's still his best trait. It's definitely, I think, high end. I don't know if it's quite as good as like Stroud last year, mm -hmm. his deep ball accuracy, but it's good. So say. the I like deep ball accuracy as their wide receiver stat, just like sacks are quarterback stat. I'm stealing that. I'm using that from here on out. Hereby been commandeered by the Dominic Fox Show. show. Um, also, the so the issues with the 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 issues that that give you some pause. It's mostly about accuracy in the intermediate and short areas, or is it about decision making, pocket management? What is it? It's kind of uh, just the, the lack of the elite thing. Like I just don't right. know what will set him apart. Like I can look at all the top ten quarterbacks. Stroud has accuracy all levels of the field, all arm angles. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Lamar. He is like Matthew Stafford as a passer. Obviously, he's got the legs, and I see a lot of comps, Jaden, to Lamar. But Lamar doesn't care about pressure. Like, it yeah. can be closing in. He'll, he'll stand there. He'll change his arm slot. He'll do whatever has to be done to get that ball off. I think he's more elastic. He's calmer in the pocket, and I think his arm talent is better than where Jaden is. Jaden is just receives, I think, fine marks in all of these areas and his accuracy isn't like really notable in you know once you eliminate the deep ball accuracy and that's a little bit concerning because he has these great deep ball catchers right. where and deep ball accuracy let's is a wide go stat in my opinion so let's let's it's go a, i'm sorry no no go ahead I'm, i was gonna say let's go positive though let's go with the the other two quarterbacks that you do see as i'm um, just as fascinated by drake may for the record yeah, as you do see as elite what are the traits that those two quarterbacks have that stand out to you caleb i don't even know how to describe it it's whatever russell wilson had where he can just like run around yeah. it, it's like I, I don't know if he has adrenaline <laughs> or it, that doesn't like affect him. Yeah. I heard Ocho Cinco say something at one point, like pressure bursts pipes. Mm -hmm. And Caleb, his pipes never burst. Like it doesn't matter the situation. He can be booting out with his back turned to the defense, like turn around. There's a guy right there in his face. And he'll just throw a 30-yard touchdown like there's no one there at all. And he just had to diagnose that in a single instant, and he's under crazy pressure. I just... One thing I love about Caleb is – just on RPOs, there'll be a free runner running right at him. And some of the arm angles that he hits to get these RPOs to the flat, you can make a whole highlight reel of them, like 10 minutes long. I've seen him throw it underhand. I've seen him, like, hit hook shots. I've seen him, <laughs> seriously, like, I've yeah. seen him jump and, like, twist his body and then throw it, like, over his head. It's, it's, it's like, crazy, the stuff that he pulls off with pressure in his face. And he's got that to him and then he also because he doesn't really care about the pressure i think that also translates to when the pocket is constricting or at least mm -hmm. it can at the nfl level right now everything is kind of wide open he has the green light to run around but it won't be like that at the nfl level but because he does so well 
under pressure out of the pocket. I think he can do really well under pressure inside the pocket as well if he's asked to do that. And then you think about the accuracy, which is all really high level with him, no matter the situation, the arm talent. Um, I'm comfortable with the with the type of guy he is and his personality. I, I just like everything about Caleb Williams, really. I think that he's he might be Hollywood, like uh, Jalen Johnson said, but I mean, I, th- I think a little bit of Hollywood. You want your superstars to have that in them, and yeah, it doesn't bother. I, me I don't really have too many questions with them. The um, so f- to to be clear, the first person you ever heard say pressure bust pipes is Chad Ochocinco. I I love that he said that. that the, the, I mean, it's it's a it's a common idiom amongst <laughs> us olds. <laughs> I can't believe is it? that you've never heard. Before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we we've been saying that since forever. I. <laughs> Look, you learn about yeet, and I learn about pressure bursts pipes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair trade-off. Uh, so, um, uh, Drake, Drake May, yeah, what is it? What's the... Well, no, there's also the thing with Drake May that I think is fascinating, too, is that we're seeing, like... I don't know if you can remember this happening at other times. It seemed like a two-quarterback draft all year long. Drake May didn't really do anything wrong. He's gigantic. He's mobile. He has a big arm. And suddenly, whether it's a smoke screen or not, it appears he's dropping down draft boards. He might be behind Jaden Daniels on Washington's board. Some people think he could be behind J.J. McCarthy on other boards. And I don't totally know how. Yeah, exactly. That, you, to, to the podcast audience, um, Theo had the exact same reaction that I had, which is just like a, a, a solemn head shake to the idea of Drake May going behind J.J. McCarthy. How do you sort of reconcile with that? What is going on with the Drake May mystery? I think part of it is he played at UNC, which is not really a football school, and I don't think many people watched him, whereas everybody watched J.J. McCarthy win a national championship and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I, I just think a lot of people aren't super familiar with Drake May's game, but that can't be true of the analysts, right? right. So that I'm not really sure Or the on. general managers, who it or appears the general like, managers. Yeah, it's... I guess the thing about... Daniels and McCarthy, maybe they're a little bit quicker with some of their stuff than May okay. with the footwork and maybe the release. I th- could see from an aesthetic perspective being a little bit more comfortable with just the way Jaden and especially J.J. McCarthy, who I think has fantastic mechanics, throw like just the act of them throwing the football. And I, I think that that might be what it is, that there's just something – that these GMs find perhaps a little clunky about mm-hmm. May, which I don't really see, but I think that's what it is. is it his, and then there's some of the crea- accuracy concerns. But His creativity is similar to Caleb Williams. Is that the like superpower that you see in him also? Yeah, I, I definitely see some electric ability to make things happen outside of structure i've seen him like stiff arm somebody with one hand and throw a touchdown with his left hand yeah, as a right-handed that quarterback that's pretty c- crazy guys draped all over him and he still is like accurate he's got the arm to make those throws when the pocket is condensing and he's fast too like i've seen him get yeah. to the edge when i thought he never would i think he's got good vision as a runner he like he works off blockers pretty well that are in front of him he's He's a nice runner and and out of structure, like he's got the arm talent to hit all kinds of crazy things. A forty yard bomb off his back foot versus Clemson. Like he's got everything that you want to me. And he he's more of like a step up and bomb it type of quarterback yeah. than like Jaden is. Like he he's not afraid to just kind of slide around the pocket instead of just overtly scrambling, like and and step up and throw and he's he, he, to me, checks all the boxes. I, I can maybe see what people are saying about, like, some sloppy mechanics or slower mechanics, but I, I just think, like, man, it's there's a lot of good with him, and he was getting it done with an offensive line that wasn't nearly on the level of Jaden's or Penix's or J.J. McCarthy's, right, who have first-round picks across them, and wide receiving core, like, he, he had Josh Downs, but then he lost them. And yeah. he had Tez Walker, who he was throwing to, right? Or no, am I – Devontae's – I can't remember his name. But I remember him going to the Senior Bowl and looking like like really struggling there amongst his peers, and that was Drake May's like wide receiver one. So Oof. I think when you look at their offense in general and like what he was working with and his skill set, he's clearly number two. And, and to me, that's like – some people like to say 1A, 1B. 
I, I think it's one and two, but yeah, yeah he's, I mean, he's in a, that tier with Caleb, I think. It's, like, it's the to same be thing. A great guy. 1A, 1B is the same thing. It's <laughs> one and two, but one and two. I know, I know. <laughs> but, but, um, that's, that's I, I've, before, never, I've always shied away from, I think, the yeah. 1A, 1B. It's like, I, Bef- one Bef- and two, but they're in before, the same Before um, I let you go and go listen to Swerved It, Breathe, Money So Big, Flawless, all of my great Yeet classics, um, I got a hot take that I want to. I want to throw your direction. I'm going to test this out with you. Marvin Harrison is so damn good and so potentially impactful as a player, I believe, that he could have the impact on a team that a number one quarterback could have. I think back to occasionally when special players come into the league, their impact is such that it makes everything around them better. We always talk about winning a Super Bowl is easier when you have a quarterback on a rookie deal. I think that's true. But I also think it's pretty easy when you have a future Hall of Famer on a rookie deal and someone, a future Hall of Famer at a very important position. I think back to Vaughn Miller. I think back to J.J. Watt. Uh, Randy Moss, and I know all these guys didn't win Super Bowls, but you dropped them on the team, and the recipe changed in a way yep. that can only be accounted for in our history, normally with quarterbacks. But sometimes there are players that are so special. When I see Marvin Harrison have the real complete package, we say that certain players are complete packages, but most of the time they kind of major in one thing, and Marvin does too. But the precision with which he runs his route, routes while being 6'5 and blazing fast and have quickness. I mean, maybe he could be a little bit better with the ball in his hand after they catch, but for who, for what? Like, I watch him play and generally take over games. You think back against high-level competition like Georgia until he got knocked out of that game. He was owning that game. And I think that we are fooling ourselves uh, and you're not fooling yourself because you have two quarterbacks and then everyone else you slide down to third round. I think there is going to be a team that decides – well, I guess it's not because Arizona's there. But if Arizona decides to trade out, that would be a huge mistake to me. Marvin Harrison, in my view, I believe, can be dropped on a team and have a impact close to what you get for having a quality quarterback on a rookie deal. I, I completely agree. Some guys are just a pro- power grid and and – the electricity just flows to everybody around them and it makes it all go. And I think that there are a couple guys, honestly, in this class that I think are super special. And I don't say it lightly, like gold jacket potential, like this is what they look like. And Marv is the best of them. I mean, he got it done with Kyle McCord. There's just absolutely no weakness that you can poke in his game. Stroud left. It didn't matter. He's he's still balls out And, and neighbors is fantastic as well. And I love Roma Dunze, but Marvin is the biggest prize, like the most surefire thing. And I, I just can't imagine taking a quarterback who might be fine, but yeah. not profile as maybe a top 10 guy over a quarterback who could be giving a speech in Canton someday. I just, I can't think of any world where that isn't a mistake. And I think that the, what I see on film, like that would very possibly be what you're doing if you, you pass on Marv for one of the other quarterbacks if you're if you're the Patriots Very, assuming that May goes too which is maybe not a safe assumption yeah well I mean if May's still around for the Patriots I can understand it but if it's anybody else get Marv and definitely if the Cardinals like, I understand they have lots of other holes get that man get him and figure everything else out throw him short passes yeah they have a second round him. they have a second first round pick yeah, anyway like course. get him and, and then, there'll be plenty of other opportunities yeah I, I completely agree with you like Especially if they trade with the Vikings at like number eleven. If you trade like to the Giants at six, it's like okay, maybe yeah, you can we get still it. get a Dunesay or neighbors, but, but don't go like back. all the way back, have man, I don't see it. All right, well I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a mock draft where you um you do comps for yeet songs for every player <laughs> that is in the draft. Um, which songs should I start with? So I'm I'm being serious. I'm listening to the song as soon as we get off this. Where do I start? I think I- I think you start at the beginning of the album. I think that uh, he has okay. two songs with, no C- with CEO in the name. I think the I, I think it's fair to say there's not a, there's not a lot All of right. skips. Well, I don't have every this, track in my head, but the first said. like five or so I think are pretty damn good. All right, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me at Theo Ash NFL on Twitter and TikTok as long as it exists, and then of course the Stay Hot podcast with my buddies Matt and Bladen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Theo, we'll do this again sometime. We'll come back uh, 
around the draft, and then we'll come back in five years and see how how much egg Jaden Daniels has put on your face. Because yeah, we'll uh, see. We'll see. It's happened before. So. I know. You just, yeah, I've been there. I'm sorry again, Josh Allen. All right, we're out. <laughs> this is the Dominique Foxworth Show.